Hey everybody, Melissa here from Zurich Designs. In one of my past videos, I went through the ins and outs of this pendant, and then I asked if you wanted a tutorial on how to make something like this. Turns out you guys do want a tutorial, so I'm gonna do that for you today. Since most faceted gemstones aren't created equal, I'm going to go through and show you my process on how I create a setting for my faceted gemstones here. Obviously this stone is pretty big and very custom and this stone will be as well. I'll go through step by step what I do to create a setting for my faceted stones. The tools I'm going to use for this tutorial are your basic tools. Round nose, chain nose, pliers, flat nose, flush cutters. I'll have all this down in the description. The wire I'm going to be using is copper today. I have 18 gauge dead soft square copper wire. I also have 18 gauge half round copper wire as well. I'm also going to need a ruler so I'm going to use this tape measure, this flexible tape measure, and also a pad of paper and a pencil so I can draw out where my prongs are going to be. Don't let the turkeys get you down. Also for this tutorial I'm going to stick with the same type of setting as this pendant here. I'm going to use the prongs. You can use any variation of setting you want. And even as far as the top of the stone, you can finish it off however you want. I'm not even sure how I'm going to finish this stone off. We'll get to that when the time comes. All right, let's get started. Okay, so this stone I'm using here is a stone I had gotten from Thailand about 10 years 10, 12 years or so ago, I used to bid on a lot of gemstones from Thailand on eBay. So this is a Mystic Quartz. It's 26 carats. It's a cushion concave cut Mystic Quartz. I think the copper will look good with these colors. Picked a really deep cut stone so I can use the jacked up setting to protect this one. Let's measure this out real quick. So this stone is about 12 millimeters deep, so that's pretty deep. First, I want to figure out if I want to keep the square cushion like this, or maybe the point facing up and down, maybe like this. I think I might go with that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn it upside down, take my pencil and trace it out. I want to figure out where to put the prongs. I'm going to draw those out. I think I want to keep the prongs down here, symmetrical up here. Doesn't look right. That's a fine eraser. So I measured the distance between these two to be about 14 millimeters. So I'm going to do the same for up here. I'm going to mark the center here. I have a prong there and a prong there. Yeah, so not only did I measure from here to there, when I measured this side, I marked the center, the very tip here. So I lined up the center of this side up here, and then I marked my prongs 14 millimeters apart. So the length of my prongs, I don't want to go past the table. You can see right here, that's where the table starts. So when my prongs come up, I don't want them to go past there. So they can't be any longer than one, two, three, three to four millimeters. So now I want to measure the circumference of my stone. So this is just approximate. So I got about two and a quarter. I'll round it up to three inches for that circumference. And since my circumference measured three inches, I'm going to cut at least three times that in wire length to take into account my for my prongs, the jacked up section, 
my bail. You can always give yourself a little bit extra. I might do four times that. Three times four is 12 inches. So I'll cut a foot in length. And now we have to figure out how many lengths do I want. I would need a length for my prongs, a length, a stabilizer, and then another length to make my the jacked up portion. So that's three. I'm going to go with five. So I'm going to cut five 12 inch lengths of my 18 gauge square copper wire. Let's straighten it out as best I can. I have my five links here. So my next step is to straighten them all out and line them up together as best as possible. They're square, so I make sure they're nice and snug against each other. Another item that you're gonna need that I forgot to mention is some painter's tape. And I take a little bit of the painter's tape and tape the ends. When I've got them all straight and lined up, you can take your flat nose pliers to kind of smash it down. So that, that will keep one end of your wires nice and snug. And then you can work your way up to the other side. You can even stop along the way and put some more tape if you like. I'm gonna do that since these wires are so long. It helps to keep your wires nice and straight and organized so nobody starts to twist on you. See, this guy's starting to twist. I like to use uncoated wire for projects like these because even the most experienced wire wrappers are going to scratch their wire. I mean, this wire is already pre-scratched. And um, when you're done, you'll be able to buff and polish out any imperfections. So with this piece, I'm doing bare copper wire. Most of the time I use sterling silver, which is also, you know, it's not coated, so you're able to buff it. Even gold filled wire. I've used a lot of gold fill also, and that is able to be buffed. It's not coated. I've got some stubborn wires through here. They're twisting up a little bit. I just grab them with my flat nose and just kind of lightly bend them back and forth and try to get them to line up all the way down, keeping a firm grip with my fingers. I'm gonna put another piece of tape here. This step might take you a while, but it's well worth it um, when all your wires are facing the same way and not giving you any trouble. This end wire of mine still wants to twist. So I just keep working them until they straighten out. One last piece of tape. Still, this end guy wants to twist. I don't know what it is. See how they bunch up? I don't like that. I do some subtle back and forth. This way, that way. There. Just to try to get these guys to behave themselves. I think that's pretty good. You're also going to be needing a Sharpie. This will come in handy because we're going to be doing some measurements here. I want to measure out the center of my wire. It's off camera, but I'm just going to mark it at six inches. So center is going to be right there. I've already measured that there's 14 millimeters in between these two prongs. So that would be seven millimeters on either side of this center mark. So I'm going to measure that out now. And I've already determined that I want my prongs to be three to four millimeters, so I'll go ahead and measure those as well. So I'm looking at my piece here, 
and I have bindings on the upper portion of my setting on either side of the prongs, just like that. So with here, I'm gonna put bindings right before the prong here and right before the prong over here, but I'm only gonna wrap the upper three. The lower two, I'm gonna put a center binding just like here, down in here. Make sure my center mark is all the way down through these two. So at this point, I want to take my tape off. So we're going to need to separate the top of the setting from the bottom of the setting. Once I separate them, I might just put the tape back on to keep everybody straight, but separately. Let me make sure my marks go through the top three here, just so I can line them up. So now that this side is off, I can go ahead and tape these three together and also tape these two together as well. Always making sure nobody twists on you. It's a little harder to get two to sit nicely compared to the all five. We'll get our binding on soon as long as they're kept straight until your bindings are on the upper three and your lower two. Okay, let's start putting some bindings on. I'm gonna take my 18 gauge half round wire. I'm just gonna pull off about eight inches or so. I'm gonna make a little hook on the end. Make sure your rounded edge is facing out. Snug that up right next to your mark, not on top of it, but next to it and go towards the center. Go to the back and snug that down. Make your binding going towards the center. Smoosh them down. Make sure I'm still right next to that mark. Next, I'm going to put the bindings on the other side. Make three on this side as well. I'm going to snip this end a little shorter. I need to move my binding so they're right next to the mark. Not on top of it, but right next to it. There we are. So we have our two bindings on up top, and I'd like to do the bindings down here, but here's the tricky part. I have to pull this bottom piece wire down so I can jack up the setting and it needs to come down as you can see the 12 millimeters because this stone is so deep so let's go ahead and do that I'm going to need to un untape my sides to free up the bottom wire here they let me move the bindings down down and away from the center so I'm going to have to redo my marks So to make it easier, I move the bindings down, grab the top two that are staying. Might as well just use my fingers. Kind of gently tease the bottom one. So here's the center of the third wire. And I got the bottom two wires. If you line that up, you should be able to put bindings on both of those. Apparently I forgot to press record. So here I brought my wire down, brought my two bottom wires together and bound these three wires together. Just like that. So the distance between the top and the bottom is more than 12. So I can shorten that up a little bit. So now I'm going to start teasing these bindings back to where they belong and try to maintain that 12 millimeter gap from the top and bottom. We can make the gap a little wider because I'm going to bend these wires to make to shorten it up. So for that, I'm going to use my round nose pliers.
make a symmetrical design here. Same here. So I'm making the design so it keeps these two um, sets of wires about 12 millimeters apart. And, and so I can also get my bindings over where they need to be. Make sure everybody's straight. I need to get the center part over the center right there. That's better. Okay, so that binding is on the inside of my markings. Let's see if I can do the same for the other side. Okay, those bindings are 14 millimeters apart, so that's pretty good. Okay, so that looks pretty good. You need some tweaking to get more symmetrical. They're about 12 millimeters and this is 14. We are right on the money here. So the next step I want to do is to, is make my prongs. So to make my prongs, like I said, I wanted them to be about three millimeters hanging over the stone. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bend each top wire up 90 degrees. Okay. And I might use my stone as a guide. So what I'm going to start doing is putting a little bend in my frame. Put the point down in there. And the reason I do this is for the angle. Because I want the frame to sit a little underneath the stone right under that girdle i want the prongs to come over the side and then i want to see where they were i should bend them i'm gonna mark them with a sharpie so that one is about here and this one is about in this area my sharpie would mark there we go That side looks a little longer than this side. Twist again. But I'm gonna increase this to five millimeters. There, more symmetrical now. Next, I want to make my prong. That'll use the flat nose pliers. So to make my prong, I want to grab the wire, nice and flush, just below the mark. And 
and bend that right over. We'll do that with to the other side as well, and then we'll come back and smash them. So grab that right under the mark. Nice tight grip and bend this around your pliers. That way they should be even if you do them exactly the same. So you can come through and smash them down. Just like that. You should have two evenly sized prongs. Now you're going to need to bend them evenly. I would grab your whole prong in your flat nose and then bend up again this way. So that way your square wires Stay nice and flush. And then they blend right back into the set of three wires. Do the same to the other side. I'm going to pinch them this way. Sorry, my pliers are squeaky. And then bend it up. So it's nice and flush and blends in with the other set of wires. There we go. Not too shabby. Before I mess with the pliers too much, I want to put another set of bindings on the side of the prongs. So let's go ahead and do that. By this point, you're going to have wires poking everywhere. So just be aware of your eyes. One set of bindings, let's move on to the other side. Get the first set of prongs made. See how that setting's nice and high and that color is going to be nicely protected okay so what do we have next looks like from this point i'm going to bring this third guy down again to meet the bottom okay i think i'm going to start shaping this setting a little bit kind of round it off i think i'm going to make a teardrop shape So you can grab anything around that has the shape that you like and just start shaping the wires around it. Just make sure they stay even. I'm also incorporating this third wire down into the shape of the bottom wires because it's going to come down and meet them. So I think I'm going to start shaping and thinking of binding these together. This bottom wire wants to twist on me. It can get kind of frustrating when you all of a sudden have a square wire that doesn't want to lay flat. It's laying flat up here and then all of a sudden it wants to twist, like right in there. It's a little better. Okay, so I brought this third wire down to meet the bottom two. So now we have three wires. I'm going to put a binding on these now. I have a little bit of binding wire left. Hopefully it's enough. I want to go three times around. I have enough, so we'll just snip off the excess here. And 
I'll slide this down where it needs to be in a little bit. Let me shape and bind this side now. This side's a little easier because there's no pesky wires that want to twist. It's looking very alien-like. Pretty cool. So our next step now is to create the next set of prongs. So I'm going to kind of shape this around the stone a little bit. Kind of get a feel for where the corners are. I don't want sharp corners, but it needs to make a turn nonetheless. But I don't want to go too far because I still need to do some prongs. So next I need to measure out the distance between these prongs and these prongs. I'm going to say 19 millimeters. Use this sharpie again. So you measure from the end of this prong. Over to where you want to start bending the next prong. I'm going to mark it at 19 millimeters. 19 millimeters. I'm going to need a set of bindings just before that mark on either side. So let's go ahead and do that now. And it's only two wires, so that makes it a little more tricky. Three or more wires is always easier than just two. I'm going to bring it down low and then move it up. I think that'll be easier. Move that down. All right, move on to the other side. And that up past my markings. Straighten them out a little bit. Alright, let's make our next set of prongs. Take the top wire, bend that straight upward. I might hold on to my bindings really tight while I do that. 90 degree angle on both sides. Take your flat nose pliers to do that. All right, just like the other prongs, I'm gonna measure, I'm gonna lay them over the stone and mark them. These need to be shaped a little bit more. Get those wires right underneath the girdle. Mark them to kind of get a feel for where they should be, and then I'll compare them to each other, and then I'll bend them. Okay, they look about the same. Five millimeters. Now they're both about six millimeters. I'm okay with that. All right, let's go for it. Okay, so just like last time, I'm going to grab the prong firmly, just under the marking. Hold on, let me do the other side, since this, this guy is hovering on top. Okay, this guy I was going to do is being blocked because it's underneath the other side. So let's do the other side first. I just did a big, big, big mistake. I bent it the wrong way, so I bent it back. Now I'm going to bend it the right way. So make sure you don't do that. Don't bend it the wrong way. That just weakened my metal significantly. Okay. Whew. Alrighty, so let's do the other side. Grab it firmly under your mark and bend it. The correct direction. Nice and square. 
Squeeze it from both directions so nothing twists on you. Like that. If they cross, just tease it back and straighten it out. Give it a good squeeze. See, that one's all chewed up because I bend it back and then bring it, bend it the right way. That's what's nice about being able to polish. We're going to bring this prong wire down and grab the prong again, like we did last time. And bend the wire up to meet the other wire. Same with this side. Bend your prong wire up. Nice and square, so it meets the other wire. Because you're going to need to do bindings on both of these now. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to do those bindings towards the end of the wire again, just because down in here is so congested. Just make sure your wires are square and not twisted. Let's move that down. Can I give these prongs a shape to them? Bear with me as I try to figure this out. Figure out what I'm gonna do next. Okay, so I think I'm gonna bend these guys up right after the bindings. I want this part to be under the girdle which means my prong have to go up and over. So I give a little space and then bring them down. I really like how these prongs turned out, but the other ones I'm not quite sure of. This prong looks a little obnoxiously long to be. I'm not sure what happened during that process. But I'm going to try to tuck it underneath the stone. These prongs aren't gonna be where I originally planned them, so we'll see how that looks. They're gonna be way up at top. Trying to get these prongs to match the best I can here. And that happens. I have the best of plans. And then uh kind of gets messed up. I didn't take into account that the frame is gonna be small because it's gonna be under the girdle. prongs that are going to be practically on top of each other, but that's fine. Okay, so we got the stone stabilized. I have it clamped. I didn't bind it yet. So let's figure out what to do with the bottom half of the frame. Bring those bindings down a little bit. Keep them evenly spaced. Make sure everybody stays even. 
Let's give a little twist. Twist on that side. Twist on this side. Again. Keep going back and forth. Make sure everybody, both sides stay even. And give another twist. And that'll bring those wires back together. Bring the bindings down to meet. Make sure they're even. For this design, I have to make this really tight up here, so I'm not going to be able to do any crisscrosses. So I think I'm just going to bind them together. Okay, so let's take this off. Snug that tight in there. Once we bind these, we have to figure out what we're going to do for our bail and the rest of the wires. Figure out something creative and unique. Right, tuck that in nice. all your other wires get in the way. Not quite how I planned, but close enough. Since I ended up putting my prongs in the wrong spot, this is another one I did. I wasn't able to do the crisscross on top. I had to bind them really snug together. See this one, I was, I have three wires on either side and I was able to crisscross them into a basket weave. Same with this one. I had two and I did a little basket weave. I guess we can do some basket weaving with the back. So, what if I started crisscrossing these back guys to kind of camouflage those front ones? That should be doable. See, anything's possible. Try to identify these back ones and separate them out. So, yeah, right now I'm just thinking. I'll make these two middle ones. See that? The bale. With those, I'll decorate somehow. But how high to make the bale? Not too high. Probably around here somewhere. These bale making pliers are awesome. They make bale making so much easier. Alright. A 
my bale I have to tack down. I have to figure out where I'm gonna anchor these. Okay, I think I'm gonna start snipping. This is a scary part. Cause I always hope I make the right decision. All right, let me tack those down to this one first since it's in the back. weaving wire. That makes the most sense. to finishing. All right, what to do with the bale and these last two wires. Okay, I have a few inches of binding wire left. I'm going to start binding my two bale wires together and then tack them down somewhere. We'll figure that out in a little bit. Bindings, I have my tail. Let's kind of feed this through. And tack this down. Hopefully not looking too obnoxious. Hopefully it will just blend in. I brought it back to the back. It's twisting on me. Brought it back to the back. So now I'm just gonna wrap it around the two bale wires once again. So don't break it like I'm about to, I think. It's 
really starting to twist on me here, so I'm going to snip it. A little snip and tuck. two left and I have two wires from my bale that I don't know if I should do anything with so we don't see them from the front at least I can still make a decoration with them but I don't want them down by the stone it's hard to get in here Turn them inward. I'm not sure if I'm going to snip them or make a design with them. Let's see. Make a swirly with this one. It's trying to sneak in here and tighten these down so they don't move without messing up your other wires. Looks a little busy, but that's all. This is too busy or not, but I'll just keep twirling and see what happens. You can do whatever you want with, with your overall design. This is all kind of this happening, so I'm going to go with it. Maybe a little busy, but I kind of like it. Now you can cut everything short up on top and make it really simple.
Okay, stone is pretty secure. This one has like little heart designs. This one, little lines going down. At least all the busyness takes away from the prong mishap I have on top here. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out all my little flaws with this polishing kit from Rio Grande and my Dremel. I'm gonna go through and take out all the marks and mars and scratches that I can find. Here it is, all finished. Once I was done polishing it with my little Dremel tool, I took it to the sink with a toothbrush and some soap and I scrubbed it nice and clean, dried it off. Got my polishing cloth here. Just need to dry it off and polish it up and there we have it. What do you guys think? From the side, it kind of angles out and then protects that color. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful and easy to follow. I know it was a journey, but we made it. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give me a thumbs up. It really helps my channel. And please let me know in the comments section if you use this technique. And also feel free to let me know if you have any ideas for future tutorials and if there's anything you would like to see. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and hit that notification bell to be notified of future videos. I make new videos each week. You can also check me out on social media. My links are below in the description. Feel free to tag me in your designs inspired by my tutorials. I would love to see them. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.